All right. I'll try to stay on time here. So we first have to understand the mechanism of hair loss. If we don't understand this, we really can't treat it. And so there's a progress from terminal thick hairs to these baby fine thin hairs to, to baldness. When it's frankly gone, you really need a surgical procedure to restore it. Otherwise, you're, you're going to be hoping for really not much when you're trying to do PRP. But you know, like the saying that uh, when all you have is a hammer, everything else looks like a nail to you. The problem is not everyone is suitable for PRP, and I think you need to think a little bit more globally of what can be done for someone. So we're looking at medical therapy for someone early to mid-range where there's miniaturization of the, of the, of the head, um, and that is someone that is great for medical therapy. I don't think you necessarily need surgery. Someone that's quite advanced in the baldness, if there's enough donor hair and there's a lot of these other factors, we're not going to do a surgical discussion, then he's a candidate for surgery. But before we get to this whole beautiful idea of PRP, we have to take a step back and treat the patient in a global fashion medically. So it's really divided into these three cornerstones, in my opinion. And without just jumping in saying, okay, everyone needs a PRP because they're losing hair, we have to look at these, each of these components. So oral and topical components, oral is a traditional way of doing it, which is Propecia for men, the one milligram. I'm not going to go into details about this. And minoxidil um, for both men and women, two and five percent, are really where uh, the two together are very synergistic. And for me, that's the bread and butter. That's the diet for hair loss. To me, it's more important to get someone started on this who's appropriate um, compared to just doing PRP injections in their head. So uh, the, do we, how did it skip? Did we lose some slides? Hold on. Oh, we lost like six or seven slides. Let me see. Maybe they'll appear again after this. Nope, nope, they're gone. How did they disappear? <laughs> All right, so I'll just tell you this. Sorry about that. Let's go back um, to the oral, the oral and topical. That sucks. Um, anyway, so I have some amazing photos of topical finasteride, and that's been something that's been huge for me now. Um, and can you go back, John? Pull it back to the, uh, just pull back and let's just uh, start there. It's fine, I'll just give you an oral narrative. If you wanna see my before and afters, go to my website or I can show them to you. But the big thing for me is uh, about a year ago, I started doing topical finasteride thinking, does this really work? Because the old studies said it doesn't really work. Well, I started doing it. I've been seeing incredible results, uh, which I cannot show you uh, because they're not on my slide. But I started to incorporate this into my regimen and started converting patients from oral finasteride who are concerned about um, side effects and seeing even better results. Um, and actually just came back from the ICHRS meeting and heard some amazing studies. They did topical finasteride with 5% minoxidil juxtaposed against 5% minoxidil and showed significant improvements, uh, these two arms. And they found that if you can modulate the dose and modulate the TRET known for penetration, you can maintain and manage against systemic side effects and still get tremendous topical advantages. Uh, the one caveat, obviously, is if there is a, uh, someone male is near a vicinity of a pregnant female, um, I usually tell them to stop that uh, during the period of pregnancy for the wife. Some adjunctive measures now are back on the screen. Um, Viviscal, I don't have no financial affiliations with any companies I, I talk about, um, can be helpful. I usually specifically use it for women that are actively shedding. Um, and if people are very miniaturized, I don't want to get them on a regimen of PRP because they can really shed. I want them to be stabilized on medical therapy for at least six weeks. Um, and if they're actively shedding, I just treat them with uh, Viviscal and minoxidil. Other ones out there, spironolactone, I don't prescribe this. You need to check your potassium uh, levels, although some dermatologists don't even do that. Uh, I send this to a dermatologist. These are for females that are having either acne or, or hair loss. It's a good adjunct to basic minoxidil therapy. And then Avidart, which is a type 1 and type 2 uh, uh, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, I don't really prescribe it. I think it's a, it's a little strong. Um, I find that just minox uh, sorry, uh, finasteride minoxidil is, is sufficient. I'm just worried about long-term side effects, so I'm not really prescribing a lot of Avidart out there. Um, just topical fibers, something you don't think about, but if you guys are, are helping people with PRP for hair loss, 
Think about it in a global fashion, all the things that you can do to help someone look better. And this can have a locking spray so that it doesn't actually come out when it rains. Of course, it's a daily application, but to me, it's a, it's a great uh, adjun adjunctive measure. In addition, um, oh, again, they're missing another slide. This is very interesting how these are being eaten up from yesterday when I checked them at five. Uh, the uh, scalp micropigmentation, which again, you cannot see, um, is a fantastic measure for people um, to get a uh, appearance of follicles when they've had their head shaved, but you really have to have a great artist to do it because there's just so much bad work with SMP out there. So what started to make me think about um, PRP uh, for with surgery was this slide by Gary Hitzig back in 2010. I was looking at this split scar evaluation. I saw this in incredible result. I said, okay, well, let's give it a try. So I started using a Gel, and again, no financial affiliation, got great results with it, um, was motivated to move to something a little bit pricier, bigger uh, production values, uh, which is stuck. This is interesting. Boy, I actually had this entirely tested, ran through, but now my, okay, we skipped a slide, and that's okay, too. Um, but this, I use the ANGEL system, which gives me a little bit of better ability to modulate um, the uh, product quality and again no affiliations but I, I've been really liking the results with this and what it, it allows me to do is titrate the percent concentration so classically we're talking about being in the bell curve of about 1 to 2x uh, 1.8 to 2.5x of con platelet concentration some of the the more recent uh, studies have been looking at a 5x concentration that's my usual go-to percentage and this very complicated slide that you see here is from the company. It just tells me how to modulate this to get my percentages. Um, there's a recent uh, study that was a, a blinded evaluation as that the PRP was sent out for third party evaluation. Um, and I thought this was very interesting. Of course, it's interesting because it's a confirmation bias because I use the Arthrex um, with a significant high level of uh, PRP active concentration. So I find that um, because I'm using such a high active concentration, I don't necessarily need to do repetitive um, treatments. I uh, just finished taking my board recertification exam and the right answer that I, I hope I got was you don't need to do repetitive, uh, uh, sorry, you don't, there's no scientific evidence for PRP. Well, actually, in the last month, hello, John, can you advance up, please? Uh, don't worry about it, it's okay. We'll, we'll, let's just keep rolling on time. If at the end we have some time, let's just advance the next one. I don't know how these, this, this machine must be eating my slides. Well, briefly, um, the, the, the next couple of slides talks about some of the studies that have been released. If you, ha if you, are, uh, if you have dermatologic surgery, I, I encourage you to look at the last um, uh, edition in September. Amazing two prospective single-blinded evaluations with uh, placebo control, um, one out of, uh, I think, LA and one out of Italy that w with huge series. One was 40, one was about 300 some. John, go ahead and just advance the next slide. Don't worry about trying to find it. Um, and significant improvements against placebo. So I encourage you to look at these studies. I'm not going to go too much into details, uh, but truly f phenomenal uh, in terms of the, 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 the results. And uh, global photographic analysis as well as hair mass index. Um, the, the, Tony Scalfani has is, is turned me on to using platelet pore plasma as well as, uh, I can't remember, a, a gentleman from India that lectured a couple years ago. Um, and using it um, in conjunction with surgery, which I'll go briefly into. I don't use this really to activate the scalp as a standalone uh, modality. I usually use platelet-rich plasma. As you see from uh, Tony's slide, it actually shows quite a bit of activity with platelet pore plasma. So don't, don't just chuck that away. Um, uh, A-cell, which is basically porcine bladder matrix that has been decellularized and it's an extracellular matrix, um, to me fundamentally is an important uh, attribute to the success I get with this uh, single therapy of, of PRP. I use 100 milligrams fine powder in, with surgeries. I'll show you my formula in a minute. And I use 200 milligrams, two packages of fine, mil of, of, uh, fine powdered uh, A-cell with, um, without surgery. So, what is exactly my mix? You are welcome to take a photograph of this. 
Um, and I actually am uh, recording this for YouTube as well. So for surgery, I basically, if you do surgery, this is really for strip procedures um, because there's actually, it's much more complicated where I'm using ATP and hydrothermosol. So I pulled that information out of the slide just because I think it's too much information for someone that's interested just in PRP. But I, I'll be more than happy to share that uh, data with you. But I basically um, spin it down uh, 120 cc's of raw blood down to about 15 cc's. Um, there's some argument that not not to have a hematocrit in there. I've, I've talked to the scientific head of the company that I use, and he says, look, it, there's blood everywhere. You're injecting blood. Why do you care about blood? If you pull a percentage of the hematocrit with you, you're actually getting per potentially a higher uh, percentage of the active platelet ingredients. So I go ahead and have 7% hematocrit spun down. I mix it with 100 milligrams of, of a, a cell, um, and the 15, I use um, 15 cc's of platelet pore plasma is my initial storage if I'm doing an FUT strip procedure that gets soaked in their room temperature. Um, that is placed into that AP, ATP hyperthermosol bath. Uh, and then before placement, they're coated with the, uh, with the PRP and A-cell. The grafts are coated uh, before placement. It does not make it stickier or harder to, to place. Um, the, the, I, I actually do also inject it into the recipient sites. Um, about 9, c 9, 10 cc. So this is the one you probably are interested more about. How do I do it without surgery? So I, depending on how bald they are, if it's a global zone that I want to work on, I, I will use probably on the order of 20 to 30 cc's. Otherwise, I'll spin it down to about 15. Again, starting with 120 cc's of raw blood. And I mix it with 200 milligrams of A-cell. Uh, and then I inject it subcutaneously. You'll, you'll see a video of exactly step-by-step -step of how to do this. So don't worry about trying to memorize this. You'll see this. Just take a good photo of it. And then I just micro pen it with a nano pen um, about 2.5 millimeters deep until there's a sunburn. So activation is critical. A lot of people just put PRP in there. They're wondering why nothing is happening. PRP must be stimulated either mechanically or chemically. You can do thrombin, uh, calcium gluconate or mechanical. My personal bias is that I don't believe chemical uh, stimulation is sufficient. I really believe mechanical stimulation is something that's critical to get good success. So I'm going to show you in this one minute video of how I do it. I'll go ahead and narrate it. Uh, so I use Pronox, a breathable nitrous tank. It helps the patients feel very, very comfortable um, and it takes about a minute to uh, make them calm. Uh, the company says that you only need, they, they oh, let me push one more time. They say that you're back to normal in seven minutes. Well, I tried this. Now, I was still a little bit whoopy for about 15 minutes, so I would give patients 30 minutes. Um, after they've breathed it down, I, I put little uh, aliquots with a 32-gauge needle of 1% lidocaine um, as little drops, and that gives them the, the ability not to feel the second layer, which is with septicane, which burns less and creates a very profound anesthesia with very little um, injected. I usually use maybe uh, two or three carpules for the whole head to surround the head. Then, this is what you, heard, you saw on my previous screen. I use a 25-gauge needle. If you're using a cell, it's too thick to actually try to inject it with um, a 27. I divide the scalp out and I have it now um, uh, placed into the subcutaneous plane. As I inject, you'll see I pull back a little on the hub so I don't waste a lot of it on the surface. It's just in the dermal subcutaneous plane and I'm just going across the whole scalp in these quadrants. So um, each quadrant I do, I try to have the exact amount, same amount. I really massage thoroughly into the area to create an equal distribution. And then I just nano pen this um, with at a 2.5 millimeter depth uh, until I start seeing that it's, there's a sunburn. I actually time it so that each quadrant has about um, 45 seconds to 60 seconds. I think you can overstimulate the scalp. If you're doing active, uh, aggressive, you know, like five minutes per little little quadrant, you can get someone to the point where they're gonna shed, shed their hair. So be cautious with that. So I'm a big fan of bio-regenerative um, medicine. I'd use it for everything. Um, oh, wow, all my, I see what you did. John, you played my hand out. You did not for the, without my before and afters. That's why I have no results on this. Could you open my other one? You, it, it's the one on the left of your screen. You have two. One is a handout for, for people without my before and afters. You played that one, not my, my principal one. Interesting. It played yesterday. All right, well, you get to see no results um, from <laughs> at all. I'm very sorry. I have a ton of before and afters. 
Um, but that's okay, I will end this talk here. These are uh, my books I've written that have my formulas of how I do this. I do not get any honoraria for, or money for books or courses. I, I give everything to charity um, so that I can put a non-disclosure agreement here. My biggest thing for all of you guys is to really have a good vision. If you're interested in going into hair or doing something creative with this, don't just say, I'm gonna do some PRP, which I get a lot of my colleagues calling me all the time, how do you do it? I really encourage you to think about hair seriously and engage in it and think about the full gamut of what is possible with hair. Um, I'm a, uh, a diplomate of the American Board of Hair Restoration Surgery. I'll be president in a couple years, currently treasurer. I really encourage all of you, even if you're diplomates of the American Board of Facial Plastic, to sit for this exam. It does require a few years of, of um, caseloads to, to do it. And I encourage all of you to come to my St. Louis course uh, August uh, 2nd to 4th next year. Um, and again, I make no money on any things I've discussed. Thank you very much.